Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us today for our webinar, Exploring Programmatic In-Game with Stack Adapt and Anzu. My name is Amanda Benavides, and I'm part of the marketing team here at Stack Adapt. Before we get started, we just have a few housekeeping items to cover, and then we can get the webinar underway. We're happy to field any questions you might have on any of the content, so please feel free to place them in the questions area of the GoToWebinar panel. We'll address all questions at the end of our session during the Q&A. If there are any questions we're not able to address in the allotted time, we'll follow up directly after the webinar. Just a quick note, this webinar is being recorded and will be shared shortly after we end. Today, we're excited to introduce to you our speakers who will take a deep dive into the world of in-game advertising with Programmatic. We're joined by Omar Fazel, Senior Manager of Inventory Partnerships at StackAdapt, and Yaniv Rosenquig, VP of Programmatic at Anzu. Omer leads the mobile and in-game inventory solutions at StackAdapt. He's an experienced ad tech professional and passionate about the use of existing and emerging technologies in ad tech that deliver affecting advertising to the right audiences. Yaniv manages the rapidly growing team at Anzu while building partnerships with the industry's top players and helping them capitalize on the huge opportunity that blended in-game advertisements present. During his tenure, Yaniv has been paramount in overseeing and affecting Anzu's programmatic offering as a substantial part of the business. So without further ado, I'd like to hand it over to Yaniv to get us started for today. Thank you, thank you very much. Um, as I just mentioned, my name is Yaniv. I'm a VP Programmatic at Anzu. And now before I start, I would like to say a big thanks uh, to Omar uh, first for uh, wearing a tie today and also uh, to uh, Stack Up marketing team uh, to allowing me uh, to speak today uh, and for everybody here. Uh, thank you for joining. Uh, so what we are doing at Anzu is bringing the programmatic tech and digital advertising standard to in-game. And this afternoon, we will be talking about brands, gamers, advertising, and what's the story in 2022. And the basis for this initial short of 20 minutes presentation is to give you an overview, overview of the gaming industry as it stands today. So let's start. So. From the outsiders to the ultimate insiders. I guess the big picture uh, to the story that we're looking uh, to tell you from an Azu perspective and across the in-game advertising industry is to shift the perspective, uh, the perception of gamers. Uh, we want to shift the perception that gamers are outsiders and to improve the understanding of today's uh, gamers as arguably the ultimate insiders. So, if you cast your mind back uh, into the 80s uh, or to the 90s, uh, gamer were, uh, gamers were seen uh, to be quite different uh, to the mainstream, uh, kind of uh, uh, males sitting in their uh, parents' uh, uh, basement playing games in the dark. Uh, times are definitely moved uh, uh, on, of course, but it's important to recognize that uh, key marketing decision makers whose average age is 40 years old, uh, coming of age around about the uh, turn of the millennium. And that obviously predates the launch of the, the digital landmarks like Facebook around 2004, uh, or indeed the iPhone, which launched in uh, uh, 2007. It's always incredible to think about how new uh, a lot of those platforms and devices really are. Uh, so clearly, uh, marketers uh, of a certain age and background grew up uh, with the idea that gamers are outside to the mainstream and somewhat deviant, uh, if you like, uh, and are a bit different to everyone else. And so uh, we're really here at Enzo to play our part in shifting the perception of gaming audience. Okay, so. Gamers uh, are diverse and attractive audience. Uh, and plus, uh, the story that we're telling is that uh, gamers are an incredible diverse and attractive audience. Um, you'd have seen numbers in the news about gaming audience and all the billions of gamers uh, worldwide. Uh, we uh, did some research. I would say the gaming audience, right? The gamer audience is about 3.1 uh, billion today. Uh, and I can tell you from the research perspective that our team has more difficult uh, uh, 
had more difficult time finding non-gamers than gamers. Uh, apart from uh, share number, it's important to understand the relationship with the world around them, uh, how they relate to today's digital consumer culture, and uh, what categories they are active in, and where they are influential. So it's really interesting audience outside the share of, of its scale. Uh, gaming serve an important uh, an important purpose. Gamers are such a diverse group of individual of individuals. Such an obvious to say that each of them have their own uh, motivation and needs. You'll see from the research uh, results that gaming uh, drives a really powerful source of identity for individuals. It's especially provided a great escape during the pandemic and lockdowns around the world. Uh, I know that I found myself uh, uh, playing games during the pandemic. Uh, and it kind of haunts me uh, 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 till today when I uh, end up spending um, an hour, uh, two hours uh, of gaming before going to sleep or before my wife uh, starts yelling at me. Uh, and uh, that links to a very uh, that, that that links very nicely into the fact that gaming is underpinning a social and entertaining paradigm. Connectivity has been critical to the role of gaming throughout the pandemic. It has been a bonus for gamers to continue uh, to connect and engage with their peers while least escaping from day to day. Uh, let's speak a bit about in-game advertising uh, and the opportunity it presents. Uh, and of course, we want to highlight what uh, in-game advertising presents a new opportunity. Uh, it is important to emphasize that gamers today are open uh, uh, to and welcome brand advertising. Uh, that feels uh, like a bold statement if you think about it, uh, that compared to the data perspective of a gamer. In-game advertising is certainly novel. There is only a fraction of gamers who are exposed to, re to regularly uh, to brands while it's playing games. So there is uh, early movers and brands that are investing in this space and learning how to get better in the media. It is a fantastic opportunity to cut through. The shared presence of, brand with, uh, of brands within games significantly enhance the brand relevance to the gaming communities and audience. It's basically to summarize uh, the uh, uh, first, the, the previous uh, uh, slides about the reach, the relevance, as I mentioned, about 3.1 uh, million active gamers, the engagement, and the cut through and impact. There is a, a huge reach and audience. The gamers are high engagement medium. Uh, it's in fold medium and the people are fully immersed in wireless they are playing. There is also a novel aspect uh, to in-game advertising. There is an opportunity to cut through and really make an impact. So that's the short uh, uh, of start point to the story uh, that we have been telling today with the investment in proprietary research study. We can move uh, the conversation forward with hard statistic, hard evidence uh, of some of the aspects we've talked about. Cool. So gamers are savvy and influential. For example, gamers, uh, excuse me, our research has told us that over half of them uh, are asked for product services recommendation and they are asked to their advice uh, amongst their peer group. Almost half uh, a very similar number see themselves as being influential. Uh, they, are, they are the ones that uh, are first to try new products uh, or know about new stuff. Uh, almost 60% of them are in the market for fashion and clothing products. Uh, so you can see that uh, they are everywhere. They are central to today's consumer communities and they are active and influential in multiple categories. Here you can see uh, uh, the actual numbers uh, of, the, uh, of the research that we did. We basically researched about uh, uh, 3,100 uh, um, across uh, uh, the US and the UK. Uh, and you can basically see the results. Uh, about uh, 1,200 of them are consider themselves as gamers, and about uh, uh, three, uh, about uh, 350 are not. Uh, definitely more gamers than more than, than not. Uh, the interesting part of this uh, of this uh, research. Uh, to my opinion, is definitely uh, the devices. As you can see, uh, mobile definitely leads uh, with 72% and console is number two. But the more interesting part here is that only 13% of the users are using mobile only as their device. Um, this is a, a very interesting, especially for Anzu, uh, which can support all, all of the gaming uh, platforms. 
uh, we'll touch that in the uh, next coming slides. So basically, uh, 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 to, sum, uh, to sum up the research, uh, we talked about uh, uh, various gaming dynamics, what device are used, uh, uh, as you saw previously, uh, the pandemic experience uh, about how uh, uh, the, the, uh, you know, the, the lockdown uh, gamers uh, trend started, uh, in-game advertising, uh, brand advertising and marketing, the consumer attitude, the advertiser category, and the social demographic profiles. Uh, something very interesting here is the uh, 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 interest of the gamers in finance, in entertainment, in fashion, automotive, FMCGs, consumer tech, and personal care. If any, if, if any of you uh, from the audience are a, a part of an organization that deals with that, definitely a big opportunity for you in gaming. So gaming. Gaming is the first growth of, uh, of entertainment, uh, unstoppable momentum. Uh, you can see the trend from 2001 to 2020 uh, to 2021. And also uh, uh, the, the, the market share here, uh, we can definitely tie it up to the uh, uh, lockdowns that we all experience. Also the new consoles uh, that were uh, recently released, the like PlayStation 5 uh, and Xbox One. Uh, the uh, uh, fast internet, uh, 5G, and Gen Z that find them uh, uh, that spend a lot of their time in gaming, uh, and we can clearly see the moves that big uh, tech companies are doing uh, towards gaming, like Facebook, like Amazon, uh, like Samsung, uh, the acquisition of uh, Activision by by, by Microsoft. Uh, so there is definitely an interest around gaming. There is definitely a buzz around gaming. Uh, um, so. Uh, you know, definitely stay tuned to see what's next. The scale, as I mentioned, there's about 3.1 billion active gamers worldwide, third of the world population. Uh, almost uh, two out of three users are, uh, three out of, of, of three people in the US or in North America are playing games. Uh, so huge amount of audience, again, everybody is there. Gaming, uh, again, gaming is the fastest growth of entertainment. What does it mean? Uh, a user spends about one hour and 20 seconds, one hour and 20 minutes uh, uh, per session. Uh, I don't know if you guys witnessed uh, or uh, saw so the Travis Scott uh, concert in Fortnite. Uh, there was also an Ariana Grande one. Uh, definitely interesting. If you haven't watched it, I truly commend it definitely shows uh, where we're heading uh, and the potential in gaming uh, and the potential in metaverse. Uh, Roblox it has around 200 uh, million uh, active users uh, uh, and 11.2 billion hours of engagement in Q3 uh, uh, 2021, and it's only growing since then. Uh, Esports events, uh, getting, um, you know, everybody here hearing about that now as uh, streamers. So huge opportunity here. A little bit about uh, uh, the US market. I think that the uh, uh, two most interesting uh, takes uh, uh, from this slide is actually uh, uh, the, the gender, um, you know, as I mentioned in the beginning, we used to think that gamers are males spending time in their parents' basement. As you can see, this research clearly so shows otherwise the split is almost half and half. So whether uh, if your audience is males or your audience is females, they can be found in gamers. Also, the, uh, the uh, uh, age split, as you can see, more than 50% of the audience, of the gaming, of the gamers audience is between 25 to 54. Uh, definitely the most interesting audience for marketers, uh, and also interesting to see the income amount uh, as well here. Uh, although for me, I think the the the, the winning uh, uh, part of this slide is the uh, uh, the gender breakdown, the opportunity in gaming, time spent versus a uh, dollar spent. Uh, look. I mean, I mean, this the numbers here are, are definitely speak for themselves. Look how much time uh, 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 gamers spend uh, in gaming versus how much uh, uh, how much money is spent into gaming, right? Uh, definitely an untapped market. 
uh, huge potential, but uh, uh, brands, agencies are so used to the standard TV and streaming and missing the opportunity here. Uh, we expect it uh, uh, to, 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 to shift completely in the coming years. Um, and, and obviously for a very clear reason. Probably my favorite slide, uh, and we're going to speak about why uh, uh, brands are slow to adapt and why Anzu will make it easier for them to adapt. Uh, so previously, the uh, the known uh, advertising in gaming or custom ads, um, like uh, changing the skin of a car or creating, um, I don't know what it KFC structure in a game. Uh, the thing about it, it's not measurable. Uh, something that Anzu solves, uh, we're going to touch that uh, later. Uh, limited console and uh, PC opportunity. Again, something that we're going to uh, explain uh, later how uh, how Anzu solved. Uh, but Anzu basically uh, offer uh, gaming across all devices, uh, all gaming platform. And the most interesting part here, annoying ad formats and bad user experience. I don't know uh, what about you, but when I'm playing game, I think there, there's nothing worse than a pop-up ad uh, jumping in the middle of my screen, bothering me from playing my game. Uh, definitely something that user hate, users hate and I hate. Uh, I, so I, I, if you guys are gaming, I'm, I'm sure you guys don't, don't, don't enjoy that uh, either. Uh, and that's where in-game advertising comes to play. So, and uh, what's our mission and uh, what are we here to do? Basically, we want to make advertising in gaming better than it is today uh, by serving uh, immersed ads that look like a, a, a part of the game, uh, add a new and sustainable revenue stream for developers, even developers that never monetized before. Uh, we want to create a, a new and scalable advertising channel uh, and a better, um, you know, maybe the most important uh, part of it, a better experience for gamers that uh, would like to keep playing their games without ads bothering them uh, uh, throughout the gameplay. This is a little bit about our latest funding ground. As you can see, there are significant strategic players here. Uh, HTC, uh, the biggest VR manufacturer, uh, Sony, Sony PlayStation, both are both of them are strategic strategic partners from the supply side. We're actually going to go live with the first PlayStation game uh, soon, and I'm going to speak about it also later. And also uh, uh, WPP uh, and NBCU, a strategic investors from uh, the demand side, helping uh, Anzu. Uh, uh, bring uh, uh, budgets uh, uh, and campaigns to the games. And there's uh, another one I want to touch, uh, which is, uh, uh, I, I assume, uh, Omar's favorite, the Chicago Cubs, uh, also chipped in. Uh, you can look at Enzu as an SSP uh, for uh, those uh, among you who are not from the programmatic ecosystem. SSP is a supply side platform, basically a tool for publishers to monetize uh, uh, their uh, screen real estate. Uh, we basically allow uh, marketers use their DSP, a demand side platform, uh, to reach to uh, uh, to games across a, a mobile, across PC, a console, any gaming engine. Uh, you can see here. Uh, publishers that are well known from the mobile ecosystem, but also uh, uh, unique premium AAA publishers uh, uh, from the uh, uh, PC and console ecosystem, publishers that never monetized programmatically or never even had uh, uh, dynamic ads in their game before, uh, something that Anzu solves. Uh, we already worked with uh, advertisers like Samsung, like McDonald's, like Vodafone, you're going to see some samples uh, in the next uh, slides. Formats. So uh, we basically offer two uh, type of uh, formats. 
blended display and blended video. We like to use the term blended as it uh, blends smoothly in the game environment. Uh, both of the of those of those formats are, are exactly according to the uh, standard uh, IAB creatives. We made it as easy as possible for marketers to uh, uh, serve ads. They don't need to change anything from their standard uh, uh, digital marketing. They can use the same creative. Uh, they can use the same uh, tools that they use, the same shapes, uh, and, and, and basically sell ads to the game environment uh, using uh, their DSP. You're going to see a few samples of how uh, our ads look like in some in, in some of our games. So this is one of the coolest uh, uh, games that we have. Uh, this is uh, Trickmania, uh, a game by Ubisoft. Trickmania uh, uh, is a triple A game, very popular in the EU market, especially in Germany. Uh, what you see here is a Levi's campaign uh, running in, in this game. Uh, there is a huge screen in, in the middle and two screens on the side. The screen in the middle plays a video, the two screens on the side uh, play a, a display ad. Uh, it blends smoothly in the game environment. It does not interrupt the player. Uh, and there's uh, um, definitely, and those ads are definitely viewable by the, by the gamer. Here is another uh, uh, very uh, uh, cool example. A football game called uh, by Axis. Um, I mentioned before that uh, you know uh, gamers are fine with in-game advertising, in-game advertising, and accept it. Over here, you can definitely understand why it looks exactly like ads from the real world. Uh, something that we are already uh, used to and accustomed to. Uh, we all use. We we we're all uh, know that we're going to go to a football match. We're going to see those ads on the sides. There is no difference uh, when we uh, when we play games. Uh, we can accept those ads as well, and also it does not bother the user. Uh, so uh, really cool. A video example over here. You can see a Paco Rabon campaign, uh, uh, but uh, you can see how the ads and the ad placement has the look and feel of the game. Looks like a part of the game uh, and blends smoothly in the game environment, uh, and also. Uh, how uh, 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 well positioned uh, the ad is in the game environment. Targeting and, and measurement. I told you we're going to reach to this part. Definitely something that is, uh, this is a part I get a lot of questions from marketers, from brand and agencies. Uh, so how do we measure it? Uh, Anzu ads are non-clickable. Uh, this is very important to mention. As I, as, uh, as I said, we do not want to interrupt the game player. Our ads are meant for brand awareness, and therefore we do not uh, uh, allow clicks. Uh, we do offer uh, additional uh, 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 measurement. Uh, we invented the first real-time 3D ad tracking engine. What does it mean? So we all know the IB and MLC standards uh, for measuring uh, uh, viewability. Basically, uh, the share of uh, 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 the ad, the, the, the part, uh, excuse me, the percentage of, of, of the screen, of the ad in the screen, uh, the amount of time that the uh, ad is played, uh, um, what we basically did, since we're dealing here with a 3D environment, uh, we took the MLC and AIB KPIs and we enhanced it with uh, ANZU standards. Uh, we make sure that there are no, using our uh, uh, ray casting uh, patented technology, that there are no other 3D objects which are part of the game environment that are blocking the ad, and also that the, the angle between the screen and the ad is less than uh, uh, 55 degrees. Think about it. is uh, it's a it's a dynamic 3D environment. The user can stand anywhere. Uh, meaning, if there is a billboard, the the user can stand uh, in the side of it or in the back of it. We make sure that the user actually uh, uh, see the ad before we fire an impression. Okay, so 100% of uh, Anzu impressions are viewable. Uh, we recently announced our partnership with uh, with Moat. 
which basically audits uh, our tool uh, so we can guarantee viewable impressions which are audited by modes. Additional tools that uh, Anzu, uh, Anzu use in, uh, in order uh, uh, to gain your confidence. Uh, so I mentioned uh, uh, Moat. We are also using Moat for uh, uh, measuring IVT. Uh, we also have Human to measure IVT. Uh, we offer uh, brand lift studies from the vendors here uh, in order to, uh, uh, to prove the effectiveness of the in-game advertising. Uh, we can create audience using uh, Kochava, and recently we also integrated Lotome, and we have audience verification by Nielsen. So uh, advanced optimization through high quality direct SDK traffic. Something very important to mention, everything we sell, all the traffic that uh, uh, Anzu has comes from our SDK. Uh, our SDK, as I mentioned, is cross device, can integrate across mobile, across PC, basically any gaming platform. Uh, Anzu is IAB and TAG registrated. All of our uh, formats are according to the IAB. Uh, we are TCF 2.0. Uh, uh, if you guys are uh, uh, from the EU, uh, we have uh, app and, uh, app and text, uh, set of JSON, basically anything you would expect from an SSP, only with cooler supplies. We can offer precise targeting through other quality direct SDK. We can uh, create a law list by publishers, by games, by geo, by vertical, uh, by demographic, by location. We can uh, we can pace throughout the day uh, and time, and also uh, target by day and time. Uh, we can target by uh, devices and by uh, connection uh, properties. Uh, again, everything you would expect. Uh, from an SSP uh, to offer. Uh, key performance indicator. So as I mentioned, we offer viewability and IVT by uh, human uh, and viewability by mode. We can track video completion rates, something which is really important. I'm gonna touch that a few in, in a few slides for now. We can offer visibility rate, the unique uh, uh, users reach, and uh, uh, the viewable impressions count. Okay, our benchmark, uh, Anzu uh, versus industry standards. So in terms of viewability, uh, as I mentioned, uh, we only fire any impressions when they are viewable, which means our viewability is above 95% on both mobile on, uh, and on, 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 on PC. Something that is really important to mention uh, we do uh, offer a, a video completion uh, uh, rate, as I said, but uh, uh, note, uh, we do recommend uh, to serve shorter videos. Think about it. If you play a racing game, uh, I wouldn't recommend to serve 30 seconds ad. The user is just going to drive by. It's a dynamic. It's a 3D environment. It's a dynamic 3D environment. It doesn't make sense. It's kind of like uh, digital out of home. But inside the metaverse, if you want buzzwords, uh, so consider uh, so when you consider in-game advertising, think about uh, creatives that would work at digital out of home, uh, especially when it comes to video. Uh, IVT rate, uh, Anzu has the uh, lowest IVT rate I ever seen in my life. We stand at uh, I would say 0 0.11 uh, IVT. Uh, the industry benchmark is 10%, uh, FYI. These two slides are going to, uh, I'm going to present a little bit about a uh, brand lift studies uh, uh, that we did. Uh, this one is in Trickmania. Uh, it's a, it's a campaign uh, that Vodafone did to reach uh, German gamers and let them know about uh, its first, its first uh, 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 connection speed, obviously, as the ad here says. Uh, what a better uh, uh, crowd uh, or audience there is to target with a uh, fast internet connections uh, than uh, frustrated uh, gamers that uh, 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 handle with, uh, that have poor connection. Uh, as you can see here, uh, the campaign had amazing results, 69% uh, 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 campaign awareness, 
uh, uh, 90% versus uh, 2% uh, brand awareness, uh, uh, 2% is the industry, industry standard, 90% is what we delivered, and 20% lift in brand consideration. It's another interesting campaign uh, we ran in uh, Australia. Uh, it's a drink that 7-Eleven uh, launched, a uh, limited edition of flavor, uh, um, and they were uh, interested in reach to reach as many uh, users as possible. Uh, we reached uh, 1 million unique users. Uh, average ad viewability is 95 versus uh, 50, which is the IAB requirement. Again, uh, uh, higher than the average, 86% uh, boost uh, in, in mind awareness. Um, very, very uh, interesting results. Uh, happy to share those uh, uh, bread leaf studies and additional ones uh, if you guys uh, interested after. Uh, so to summarize regarding uh, uh, the path uh, for in-game advertising uh, and about Anzu offering, uh, we offer programmatic advertising uh, across mobile, PC, and console. As you can see here, Anzu is the sole licensed in-game advertising for, for provider for Xbox. Uh, we're also verified by Unity. Uh, we offer banner and video support. Uh, we have the first to market in-game viewability, which is audited by Moat. Uh, we have over 100 live games across all platforms. We have exclusivity with over than 30 of them. And um, I guess, Omar, uh, Omar, you get the mic back. Yes, so thank you, Yaniv. So now I'd like to pass it over to Omar to begin our panel discussion with Yaniv. Take it away. Yes, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, well, first of all, I'd like to thank everybody who joined, who took time to join this uh, webinar today. Uh, we appreciate your presence, uh, and uh, we hope that uh, you have found this, uh, you're, you're finding this uh, informational and uh, useful uh, for your business. Um, and Yaniv, uh, thank you so much for you know sharing all this great information about in-game with us. Um, and also, uh, thank you for pointing out that I'm wearing a tie. Uh, mm -hmm. It's uh, because uh, today's Tuesday and I do a Thai Tuesday thing, nothing to do with this webinar. Uh, <laughs> but uh, moving on, um, you know, I think um, I, I definitely want to. Before we get into the questions and discussions, you know, um, I want to preface by saying that we, um, as Stack Adapt, are really excited to, you know, onboard um, in-game inventory uh, on our platform, and uh, we're excited to be launching this with. Um, uh, you know, Anzu initially, and then um, uh, we will also be uh, partnering with other key players in the space, uh, and we'll have a uh, full depth of uh, inventory uh, from the various uh, players in the space. Um, Anzu is definitely a very valuable partner for us, uh, so thank you, Yeni, for uh, being here today with us. Uh, what we're going to discuss now are some of the questions that typically come up when we talk about blended in-game internally, as well as with our uh, 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 clients externally. So um, I have a, you know, I have a, a couple of different buckets of questions like execution, you know, targeting, measurement, and and so on. Uh, so I'm going to jump right into it. Uh, so let's let's talk about, um, you know, you uh, of course we we know that you offer like video and uh, uh, display ads um, in the game environment, but what are the different ways that the inventory can be accessed, you know, uh, from a DSP's perspective, like there's open exchange, PMP or PG. Could you uh, tell me a little bit about that, Yanni? Yeah, definitely. So exactly, basically the, the, the inventory can be accessed as exactly uh, uh, through the uh, path that you just mentioned uh, via uh, open exchange deals, uh, whether if it's uh, a PMP uh, uh, or PG. Uh, note that there are some games, especially the, the, the more unique ones, uh, which we only offer via PMPs. Uh, mm -hmm. And we might need a, a creative approval for. But it's mm -hmm. as easy as accessing to any other uh, uh, um, 
SSP, right? We'll basically, if you would like to use a PNP, we can create a deal for you. If you would like to uh, tap our supply uh, uh, via Open Exchange, it's also available. But again, uh, uh, not all games are available via the Open Exchange uh, uh, due to uh, uh, some sensitivity on the uh, publisher side. Right. Um, and so for those of you, I, and I doubt that there will be that many people who are not familiar with the concept of a deal, but PMP is basically a private marketplace where an exclusive list of um, advertisers get to bid on uh, a certain inventory. And then pro PG is programmatic guaranteed where uh, we have a guaranteed, uh, you know, by through Anzu, uh, where we are the only ones bidding on a certain, um, you know, inventory uh, at a certain agreed upon price. Um, so with that said, like, do, are there any minimum budgets expected for a, a PMP or PG or for the games that you mentioned are exclusively available only through PMP? So generally there isn't a, a minimum budget at this stage. Uh, we are aware we are a, a new and unique animal in this ecosystem. We would like to allow everybody uh, to access and explore our supply. Uh, we do recommend uh, uh, to at least uh, 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 start with three to five K, so you'll have enough volume to get uh, the feel of it and enough data uh, to understand the impact. However, uh, we do not uh, at, at this point uh, uh, require any minimum guarantee. Okay. Um, so, what if like there are uh, are there like any CPM goals um, that uh, you know advertisers need to adhere to? Um, and what happens if they're not adhering to those CPM goals? Yeah, there's definitely uh, CPM goals. It's uh, 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 more uh, uh, related to the publishers that uh, some of them have a requirement regarding the CPMs. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a rate card we are able to share after the call, which will uh, give you transparency regarding the prices, uh, which varies across a, 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 a platform and, and, and a geo and creative type, whether it's display or a, a video. Uh, the more unique uh, uh, inventory and the more premium the game is, obviously the CPM is, uh, is higher. Uh, mm -hmm. There are, uh, there's definitely a, a CPM that uh, will allow you to access all of our traffic. Right, and and for any uh, CPM related questions, uh, please, uh, audience, feel free to direct that to uh, myself and Stack Adapt. Uh, we will, um, the account teams here will provide any bid guidance to uh, you know uh, parties interested in utilizing this inventory. Uh, and uh, also, um, what about, let's talk a little bit about this question comes up quite a bit. Is, is that like, do you uh, support any sensitive verticals? You know, because uh, at times, uh, you know, there there uh, are agencies or advertisers within the political vertical or, or a sensitive vertical like cannabis, you know, uh, or even crypto or, or alcohol, you know. So are there um, any guidelines around that? Are, are some of these uh, allowed or prohibited? What is your take on that? Okay, so as a rule of thumb at least at this point we would prefer uh, uh not to run this type of ads uh, mm -hmm. we do or we can create specific deals uh, for specific publishers which allow uh, this type of categories uh, having said that uh, there are uh, um, you know microsoft policies and sony place and sony policies which would not allow running this type of ads on the more unique uh, and, and premium uh, uh, content and games. Right. Uh, if needed, we can create a specific uh, a deal, contain a specific uh, 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 list of uh, publishers which allow that. However, uh, we have to uh, consider it case by case. Uh, right. yeah. And so we should be able to source like a list of uh games that are approved for sensitive verticals from you right that's correct we can also by the way create an always on deal for you that will contain those type of games to make it uh -huh. easier for you okay great uh so so the next one i have here is um um well, are there any uh major differences between running programmatically versus running direct with you uh 
so you know of course being like a dsp uh, we 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 know like some of the benefits of running programmatically but if you could just touch on that a little bit that'll be great um so you know my title is is is, is vp programmatic <laughs> i would <laughs> i would uh, <laughs> we definitely uh, prefer everybody to run a, a programmatic uh, deals with us and the programmatic advantages you know uh, uh, having uh, transparency and and and, and, and rich uh, uh, definitely recommend that the 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 control is on the buyer side they can uh, uh, paste the, the campaign however they they, they they see fit they have full transparency on the uh, on the reporting uh, and they can see the numbers uh, reflect on their dashboard uh, mm -hmm. having said that uh, we do offer roblox supply uh, yeah. Roblox is the biggest uh, metaverse in terms of user users. I mentioned that uh, on the presentation, and Roblox at this point is not available programmatically. We do expect it to be available programmatically in the near future. My marketing team highlighted to not uh, uh, to not share uh, uh, the estimate date at this point, uh, but it's coming soon. Uh, stay tuned. Well, we are really excited about that because we do get a lot of questions around Roblox and uh, we can't wait till it becomes programmatically available on the Stack of that platform. Uh, me too, trust me. Me too. I'm, I'm sitting on my uh, uh, chief product uh, uh, desk every day and uh, asking where's my Roblox programmatic, uh, but it's coming, I can assure you. Thank you so much. Um, Having uh, two uh, little boys, you know, I'm well familiar with Roblox. Any of the audience who are who are not familiar with Roblox, it's a gaming platform which has a uh, you know multitude of games, and uh, they're all very exciting and fun. And uh, you know, we're we're uh, we're excited about that uh, and with, yeah. in the, in, on the roadmap. Uh, it's so definitely, yeah, sorry. Yeah, I mean, I just wanted, to, I just wanted to, to, to 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 mention it's it's you know when when people refer to a metaverse. Um, Roblox is basically a, a, a version of a metaverse. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So that's great that you brought up uh, the metaverse because my, my my next section is all about inventory and formats. Uh, so we know that you have display and video. What other formats um, are on the future roadmap? You know, you you mentioned metaverse. Maybe you could talk about that a little bit. Um, yeah. So. Metaverse is definitely, you know, a buzzword uh, uh, these days. It's basically a virtual version of the real world, uh, I would say, where users create an avatar of their self and interact uh, with other users in this uh, uh, virtual world. There are uh, several uh, uh, platforms. Uh, Roblox is one, uh, Minecraft is one, there's a few others, uh, Meta. Uh, obviously, uh, Anzu is currently uh, offering only Roblox. We do have a few uh, uh, other uh, potential partners uh, mm -hmm. in the future. Uh, at this point, we offer uh, uh, the Roblox inventory uh, uh, direct. Uh, we did some pretty cool custom deal uh, with American Eagle. Uh, uh, the American Eagle world, you can read about it, or if you uh, uh, like, I can share some additional information about it. Uh, so that, that's, that's, that's cool. Uh, yeah. yeah, no, that's that's amazing. What about like, um, are we potentially then seeing, uh, you know, uh, uh, partnerships with with the likes of, you know, uh, VR platforms like the Oculus Rift, or you know, where where people actually plug in and go into the you know metaverse, and uh, do you foresee that happening too with the in-game ads? So I'm not only foreseeing that happen. I mentioned our uh, strategic investment by uh, HTC. HTC is currently um, the biggest VR platform, more common in APEC. Uh, I cannot share a lot about it at this point, uh, but expect uh, some PR coming. Uh, Anzu, original name was Anzu VR, actually, mm -hmm. Anzu Virtual Reality. Uh, That's uh, amazing. Some, yeah, some stuff has yeah. changed since then, but basically, uh, our tech supports any gaming platform, any gaming engine, including VR. Uh, I, I really hope it's not going to be like Ready Player One. Uh, 
uh, if you saw the movie. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're 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 uh, uh, you know we're gonna uh, stay true to our uh, uh, to our mission to respect yeah. the gamer, and it's gonna be the same in the VL. Yeah. Well, well, that's amazing. Uh, I think uh, you know we're really looking forward to that too. Um, and a couple of quick questions, like uh, you know, that have come up, like does the video inventory have right. audio? Um, and also, like, do you allow QR codes in the creatives? Oh, uh, yeah. So as like we don't allow uh, uh, clickable ads, as we would like to uh, uh, maintain the gamer experience. Uh, same goes to uh, audio. Uh, we want to make sure that the uh, gamer uh, full uh, feels the full experience of the game, hence we do not allow uh, uh, audio ads or 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 videos with audio. Uh, QRs are accepted. Perfect, that's amazing. Um, so then uh, another thing that people seem to be very interested about are esport esports. You know. Uh, what will what what will your esport offering look like? You know, uh, and with esports hosting major um, events now, as you had uh, also mentioned earlier, uh, mm -hmm. what are your future plans? You know, with the uh, uh, esports. Okay, so Trickmania, the game I mentioned, it has a big uh, uh, esport uh, league in Europe. Uh, and we can uh, uh, kind of offer sp sponsorship, serving ads exactly as you would serve into any other game, only through an esport event. Uh, in the future, we do intend to allow a, a measurement in terms of the uh, spectators, the eyeballs that are watching the games. Uh, and it's not only through to esports, it's also relevant to streamers, by the way. Uh, mm -hmm. which is also a really big opportunity in this uh, ecosystem. Uh, mm -hmm. But yeah, and generally when there is a competition uh, and Anzu SDK is integrated to the game, it's acceptable. Nice. So there will be opportunity to sponsor and potentially like take over, you know, mm -hmm. yeah, 100% yeah. sure of voice on the, you know, on a certain esport event or something like that, just like you can do in live sports. Yeah, exactly. Uh, in some cases, it's still a work in, in, in progress, uh, especially specifically the, the measurement type of the spectators. Uh, uh, but yeah, uh, uh, it will be it will be uh, uh, something that we're gonna uh, offer more and focus more on the future. Right. Perfect. Um, and then uh, let's talk about a little bit about uh, reporting. You know, some questions uh, that come up around reporting is like, can we see impression level reporting uh, by game name and publisher name. Um, so if you can touch on that. Yeah, definitely. As, as, uh, exactly as you work with any other SSP, we will uh, pass this information in the bid request and this will be available on the DSP uh, uh, reporting, uh, right. impressions uh, uh, by game, by uh, bundle ID. Yeah, right. exactly. Stack it up. Yes, we, we, we will ensure that this uh, information, this uh, uh, reporting is surfaced uh, on the platform. Um, so this will be available on our platform for sure. Um, and then there's another question, which is a, a little, you know, unique. Uh, somebody was, somebody brought up like, do you, uh, uh, do costs vary based on certain points in the game? Like if a player is actively racing versus just walking around? Okay, so it's a it's a it's a pretty cool question. Uh, the answer is is no. Uh, what we will offer is more of a, a, a contextual targeting. Uh, mm -hmm. The price is not going to change. Uh, what's going to change is your ability to target contextually. Think about that. Um, take a racing game if you would like to sell an ads to a racing game, right? And the the the, the track is in, in in is is in the beach. We will be able to send uh, sales words in the bid request, and then uh, which will flag uh, the, the the environment that the racing is happening, and then it will be you know uh, brands will be able to sell, for example, uh, I don't know sunscreen uh, ads or uh, car insurance ads. Uh, so yeah, 
uh, it's 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 the, the the price will remain constant uh, content uh, constant uh, mm -hmm. but but the uh, ability to target const uh, contextuality contextual will improve perfect uh and then uh, a little bit about targeting uh and uh you know our uh, as a dsp uh are we uh, it, would it be fine for our users to layer uh, additional targeting from our side, like uh, custom audiences, which maybe uh, maybe IP-based uh, segments, you know. Uh, yeah, IP. Yes, yes. Uh, IP definitely. Uh, for mobile, also IFA-based. Uh, we also offer. Uh, 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 Anzu is integrated with uh, Kochava and with Lotame, so we can also offer audiences on our end. Uh, but uh, a note, uh, PC and console do not have uh, IFA, obviously, uh, so IP is preferred. Perfect. Uh, and then you also mentioned like the Kachava or Lotome um, uh, segments uh, for with you guys. What, what like those could be based on uh, uh, what, what parameters? Because because would those uh, segments be based on? Like would it be geo, uh, you know, behavioral, um, and so on? I yeah, suppose. exactly. Uh, ad hoc audiences, uh, we can create lists, uh, apply, uh, apply them, and send only the relevant users, uh, which are part of the audience. Uh, in some cases, it can be like we do recommend to keep it as open as possible, at least when you you know learn uh, the Anzu inventory and how in-game work. Uh, but uh, uh, yes, we can do all of it. Perfect. Um, so. So yeah, so we can do custom t um, audiences. That that's pretty cool. Um, now let's talk a little bit about measurement and viewability, brand safety, mm -hmm. and IVT. I know you brought that up in your slides also. Uh, you talked in detail about 3D tracking technology. I think so. Uh, I don't think we need to talk about that. But was uh, wondering uh, that are you um, also it's, it's, so you mentioned that mode is auditing your viewability and and uh, you know basically vouching for you guys and making viewability your viewability metrics available on the mode uh, uh, platform. But do you also see like IAB coming out with a standard you know viewability uh, uh, mechanism for uh, uh, the blended in-game uh, inventory? Yeah, yeah, definitely. In-game is a big topic right now, uh, and there is a lot of uh, discussions around it uh, in the IEB uh, regarding uh, uh, measurement. Uh, uh, we're we're an, uh, very active uh, participants in those discussions, uh, and there's gonna going to be some uh, 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 you know protocols uh, uh, and more information uh, will be released uh, uh, soon. Uh, at this yeah. point, we're trying to adhere the uh, standard digital digital uh, 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 measurements uh, to make it easier for advertisers. Yeah, that's amazing. Perfect. Um, so when we talk about uh, brand safety, um, you know, maybe you could touch on that a little bit. Like, how do you ensure brand safety? You know, um, do, do you follow the same standards as other high impact digital advertising? Uh, yeah, I mean, since we can create a allow list based on the game itself, we can obviously exclude uh, games which consider uh, uh, non brand safe. Uh, although it's currently a big, you know, a big question how to address uh, uh, games. You know, on the one side, uh, shooter games are uh, are uh, currently considered as not brand safe. Uh, at least for some brands, but how would you uh, uh, how would you address the biggest shooter game in the world right now? I mean, would you like to be there as a brand, or because it's a shooter, not? Mm -hmm. uh, we can definitely uh, uh, avoid uh, uh, serving ads in uh, games that uh, uh, the brands don't want to be there. So uh, a, we can create deals. Here. Yeah. Uh, so from a from a DSP perspective, like if you're running Open Exchange, you know, if you're buying on Open Exchange. In order to avoid any um, games that have like a you know you know violence associated to it, like a shooter game or whatever, you could potentially create block lists and apply that to the campaigns, right? Yeah, yeah, that's correct. Yeah, perfect. There was uh, there's another question that uh, you know comes up sometimes is like, is there a way to measure time on screen? 
uh, you know, uh, with things like racing games or adventure games, you know, how much like clients might want to know how lo how long the ad was in view before, you know, the 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 user walked away from from that ad or zoomed away from the ad. Yeah, we will send this information in the bid request, in the bid request, the session time, uh, visibility, uh, media seconds, and seconds to impression that uh, can uh, it, it, it will cover this information. So yeah. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Omer and Yaniv. So it looks like we've reached our time limit for today. So unfortunately, we won't be able to get to your questions. However, we'll be following up directly with the audience members who did have questions after this webinar. Thank you all for attending today. We hope that you found it both informative and insightful. We'll be sending out a follow-up email with a recording to all registrants. Please don't hesitate to reach out with any other questions you might have. Thanks again for joining, and enjoy the rest of your day.